And welcome back, everyone. This is the Friday evening session of Art and Code Homemade. And my name is Golan Levin, Director of the Art and Code Festival and Professor of Art at Carnegie Mellon University. And I'm thrilled to welcome you to our, um, our evening session. We're going to have three presentations. Um, uh, it's five o'clock Eastern time uh, where I am, and we will be shortly hearing from Leah Beakley and Naniba Shakon uh, at, uh, at six o'clock our time, one hour from now, we'll hear from Kelly Heaton. And then at 6.30, we will hear from Virginia Sanfratello and Ronald Rael. Um, it is now uh, my pleasure to introduce um, collaborators, Leah Beakley and Nani Chacon. Leah Beakley is a professor at the University of New Mexico, where she directs the Hand and Machine Research Group. Her work explores integrations of computing, electronics, art, and craft. She is a pioneer in paper and fabric-based electronics, and her inventions include the Lilypad Arduino, a construction kit for sewable electronics. Naniba Shakon is a Navajo Shikana painter and renowned muralist whose work is oriented to community-based arts and education and sociopolitical socio issues affecting women and indigenous peoples. Following a decade-long career as a graffiti writer, Nani shifted to large-scale public works and murals, a natural progression that extends from her personal philosophy that art should be accessible and a meaningful catalyst for social change. Leah and Nani have been uh, collaborating, and we're going to hear about that now. It's my pleasure. Please take it away. Um, yeah, so um, today, um, Nani and I are excited to talk to you about a collaboration uh, around um, designing and building interactive murals. Um, and I should say as a preamble that this collaboration is really just starting. Um, and so we're excited to kind of talk to you about the early stages of this project. And then I hope also have a little bit of a conversation about it. Um, I'm gonna give a short overview of, of my work and some of the precursors to this project. And then Nani and I will kind of trade off and go back and forth. Um, so just a little bit about me and my work. Um, my work um, takes place at the intersection of um, kind of technology, uh, technology research, along with kind of material and cultural research. I'm really interested in exploring the relationships between materials, um, culture, longstanding um, practices of how different cultures work with different materials, and then integrating that with technology to give rise to kind of new creative opportunity for all sorts of different um, people and kind of different perspectives. Um, and uh, anyway, that's a super brief overview. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit now about our project and um, the, the precursor kind of projects to it. So we're planning to work together to build these very large scale murals that have embedded electronics and um, interactive um, capabilities due to the fact that they'll have these embedded electronics and embedded um, computing capabilities. Um, part of the, um, the, the impetus behind this project was a series of uh, projects that I worked on when I was a professor at MIT um, with my graduate students there. So we designed and built a, a series of interactive wallpapers. So these were large scale surfaces that we painted using conductive um, inks and paints um, and then built custom electronics to kind of attach to these different wall wallpaper surfaces to explore like what very large scale kind of ambient um, interactive surfaces, like what could you do with those um, both kind of aesthetically and also um, uh, playfully and also kind of functionally. Um, how might surfaces like this um, what might they, what might it mean to have a large scale interactive surface kind of embedded in your home um, that could provide like lighting and speakers and kind of electronic functionality, uh, along with some um, sensors about the environment and the ability to kind of interact with all of, you know, the de devices, the network devices in your house in this like physical kind of ambient way. 
So we um, constructed these artifacts and then kind of programmed them with a range of different applications and um, games and, and so on and so forth. Um, the previous image was a close-up of one of the wallpapers. This is a larger uh, image that gives you a sense of the scale of some of these pieces. Um, and again, I wanted to just highlight the fact that this is kind of painted on a very um, large surface using conductive paints, a mixture of like conductive inks and paints, and then traditional um, paints. Um, and then we're able to like attach electronic components to the surface um, of that um, painted wall um, using things like screws um, and magnets and stuff like that. So the plan for our collaborative project is to use some of the lessons that we learned um, in our material-based research, um, our design research, um, and also kind of the interaction design research that we did for this series of projects, and then take it and really expand it and, and also make it something like completely different, um, working on a much larger scale even than these projects were um, outdoors and also in a very different, um, very different context. So these uh, wallpapers were intended to um, be used and built kind of in the home, in this intimate private setting. And of course, murals are, are a completely different um, can of worms. So murals are these um, outdoor, very public displays that are often rooted in um, a particular um, community and a particular history. Um, oftentimes, and I'll hand things over to Nani in a second and she can talk more about all of this, but oftentimes, um, murals can communicate uh, in, in an almost narrative way, something about the hi history or um, kind of uh, uh, important kind of cultural context of a particular community. And that um, is very different from what you would expect from the wallpaper in your home. So we are just starting again to think about how all of these different threads come together. Um, I might talk a little bit more about this in a second, but I'll mention that um, one of them, an ongoing one for me, is an, an interest in and excitement about um, the materials that go into this project and the meaning of those materials um, along with the meaning of this larger project. Um, so I'll come back to that in a bit, but um, Nani, I'll hand things over to you. Hey, hi everyone. My name is Nanaba Chakon. Um, I'm a, a muralist. I've been doing this about 20 years. And the, right now the focus of my work is doing large scale pieces that are community based and site specific. And what I do with these works is I, I like them to work less in the way that a traditional mural works in kind of a historical context that kind of gives the narrative to maybe a story or a history of peoples and really use this platform and this medium to provide questions, to provide a question that then the community comes to answer. And that question to begin with is began with the community also. So um, that's a little bit, so it becomes this exchange of kind of working back and forth and therefore it always needs an audience. And I think that murals it creating work in this way, um, murals work the best for, for this medium because they are completely accessible. Um, this piece right here is, I put this slide in here because this is actually um, an arts and technology piece that I had created about um, 10 years ago. And it's titled, um, she taught us to weave and it's manifestations of spider woman. Spider woman is a deity that taught Dene people to weave, which was really a tool of sustenance. And this mural itself was embedded by a low powered FM radio. So that way it was transmitting and really wanted to think about the context of using tools and using the idea of um, the electromagnetic spectrum as a way to one kind of act as a trap 
um, that you always have this viewer in front of you, that a captive audience. And then what are those, what is that spectrum kind of imposing on them? So what it's actually transmitting is a prayer. And my, I collaborated with my sister. My sister does, um, she builds transmitters. And we had, it's funny, this is just kind of a side tangent, is uh, we had kind of looked into the materials that Leah had mentioned just a second ago and like had no idea how to use them. <laughs> so we kind of gorillaed, um, gorillaed wiring this and, and uh, hooking up some uh, solar panels on the roof and put, building a transmitter outside. So you could go to the next one. The next slide. Sorry, I don't have a... Oh. I went to the next slide, so... Oh, yeah. I think it might take a while to show up now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, so this is, this is a very large piece. Um, I wanted to give a detail of this work, but also there's, if you want to go to the next slide also, um, Leah, then you can see the out, the pan out of the entire mural. And this mural was created by children at an elementary school. I mean, not, I'm sorry, at a middle school at Washington Middle School here in Albuquerque. And really it was relying on the students to help dictate the content of this mural and then um, which was finding empowerment. So a lot of the times I work with these overarching concepts um, and then hone them into an idea that um, is kind of cultivated over time. And in thinking of empowerment, what, what we did was we researched these plants that were growing up around their neighborhood. A lot of them are um, categorized as weeds. A lot of them are kind of these nuisance plants. And then we took them to an herbalist that was in the same community and she identified their medicinal properties. And for, for us, um, me and the students who are working on this, this is the way that we were able to, one, empower, um, empower these plants, but also empower the students with knowledge um, that they are then passing along and kind of honoring, honoring these plants that you would, um, normally dismiss or even pull out and throw away. So this is, I, I wanted to show this piece to show the interaction between community and it starting from a community focus and using it to answer questions and create dialogue. And then go to the next work. This is an, another piece. Um, and this is, this is an interesting work. A lot of the works I do um, are in relationship to the spaces that they're in. Um, so I tried to create that dialogue with me as the artist, but also the people of that community and the conversation that we might have in between that. So of course you can see this is at the El Paso, El Paso Museum of Art. And I did this piece about the river that joins us, um, that travels, of course, the Rio Grande, um, that travels all the way up through the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, all the way down, um, and ends in Juarez. And really our relationship to the water and our relationship to the history of the water. And the water that flows between us is really water of, of millions of years and the water that's inside us. And the interesting thing about this piece was that we also were able to collaborate with um, a small group that was working on augmented reality. And they use this work as a, as a teaching tool and it's paired with a program um, for augmented reality. So you could take a cell phone, download their program, kind of scan across it and they did a series of murals that were done in El Paso. Um, and on this one in particular, actually it works with almost anything. If you probably even screenshotted this and then did it, you could, you could look at it. But um, 
then the plants move, you get actual sounds of the river. Um, I, they went and took some sound bites of of the river and you get an overview of some of like the silvery minnows and some of the plants and some of the history. And yep, that's about, <laughs> that's about, that's all I have for slides in my work. Okay, okay great. Um, so we thought we would take the, the last part of our, um, of our talk here to just talk a little bit about the, the collaboration and, and kind of what we are most excited about and interested in and in, in coming together um, for this collaboration. Um, uh, just a, a, a little um, kind of mock-up of, of, I don't know, potential mini interactions that might take place. This is another close-up of, of the, one of those, um, that initial um, mural that Nani showed. Um, um, for, for myself, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the different aspects of, of the collaboration and, and what I'm excited about. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I feel um, most <laughs> interested in and excited about is, is learning um, from Nani and, and kind of e expanding my own knowledge and understanding um, through this project, um, both in terms of um, kind of designing and, and, and making a meaningful and, and beautiful um, piece of work that occupies this really different kind of space and this really different um, kind of um, meaning for people. Um, but also um, there's, there's this kind of um, third component of the project, which we haven't really talked about yet, which is um, our plans to collaborate with, um, with youth around the city of Albuquerque to kind of collaboratively design and, and build murals. And this is something that um, Nani has a tremendous amount of expertise in and that I'm really um, look with, looking forward to kind of bringing youth into this process and um, helping them um, have them participate in this process. And also my hope is that this um, may be an opportunity to present kind of technological tools to, to youth and to, to, um, to other community members as a creative um, tool that, um, that maybe looks and, and feels differently than, than are you know, the stereotypes that, that folks might have in their heads about what technology is and what you can do with it or what you might wanna do with it. So, um, so anyway, those are a, a few of the things that I'm really excited about. Um, Nani, I'll, I'll hand things over to you. Yeah, um, I, I for one was very, very excited when um, Leah, asked me to collaborate on this project just because of the new, I feel like it really is a new horizon for public art. Um, definitely I've worked in a large capacity of creating lots of different types of public art pieces aside from murals. Um, and I am really interested in what technological components can add to content and the way that we the way that we internalize that, those concepts. Um, I really think about the way that we use uh, technological tools right now. And I, I really feel that they are still very much on the utilitarian level. And this is, I think, a project for me that shows that shift between being utilitarian into art and becoming something beautiful and becoming something more, becoming something aesthetic. And for me, that really is an increase in the way that we think, the way that we see the world, the way that we participate in the world, and also that we see and receive knowledge. So all of those horizons for me, I think are, are just very exciting. Um, and they're all, the one of the things that I love about creating work in the way that I do is that learning is a huge part of my process. I, I think it's the reason why I choose to create work 
that's collaborative um, with community members and with students and with children sometimes or elders or um, really and uh, you know anybody because I think that I learn I learn a great deal and for me that's important I think that that really um, facilitates the growth of my practice and um, creating new pieces each piece that I make kind of builds upon itself and I think in the whole scope of everything that um, including students in that is is very essential because at some point um, you know it's great you know when you have something new and you do something new but if you're not really passing on that knowledge or the cultivation of that knowledge then the next phase of it can't really go anywhere. So um, I'm excited to embark on this with Leah, Leah and um, be able to not only facilitate new ways of making art, but also new ways of thinking. That I just, what you just said, Nani, made me like, um, just think about like, I mean, to some extent, I've already said a little bit of this, but one of the things that, that just that so much resonates with me. And one of the things that I feel like has taken me a, a while to learn um, and that I now feel so passionately about is, is um, the way that, uh, that we as a society often approach education um, as, as, as um, I don't know, del there's a big component of education that is rightly like passing on knowledge that we've already gathered, right? That's like a huge component of education. But I also think a wonderful, often like overlooked opportunities in, in education are like involving new people in like genuinely new work and genuinely like new exploratory processes. And, and one of the things that I'm, most excited about for this project is is to be involving like kids and youth um, in in this project from the very beginning in developing like this weird technology that has never existed and we're not sure we really know how to build and and having them be part of that genuine like technological and artistic like discovery process. Um, from the ground floor is something I'm, I'm just really excited about. And I think is, is just an exciting and really fulfilling way to approach education in general. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, I also have a background in education and, and that's always been kind of when I agree with you and that it's often overlooked and, and not, valued sometimes. Um, sometimes we can get even stuck in the tropes of, of the way that teaching is facilitated. But um, yeah, I, I'm also uh, really interested in, you know, every now and then just to let the audience kind of in on a little bit in on where we are in the process, even though it's quite new, um, is like hearing the capabilities that are even possible. And for me thinking, about a wall that can, um, of course I look at public art as being interactive, that, that you need an active audience to participate in a lot. We see a lot of public art pieces on the internet, but it's like go out in the, <laughs> in the world and look at them because they're meant to be experienced on large scale. I think that that's the impact of seeing um, work like that. But to think about, um, the capabilities that technology will have in our public spaces and for that to be accessible. And, um, you know, Leah kind of touching on that with how, you know, at the first attempt, it was really about creating some, you know, she had made a prototype that was wallpaper in a home, but really breaching upon that and thinking about the accessibility of that, um, it shouldn't be limited to like one person or one household that really it should be kind of out there for everybody. And for me, that's really important because that then kind of breaches on the way that we begin to think as a society, the way that we begin to think as people and how we are bringing together and cultivating concepts um, within that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, now is maybe a good time to open things up for, for questions um, or, or comments from the audience. And, and here I am. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Nani and, and Leah. Um, there are a bunch of great questions uh, coming up in the chat here. Um, I, I have a question to, I'd like to start with, which is um, sort of based on my own intuitions as a person who creates interactive art. Um, it seems like there's multiple scales at play here in, in your eventual collaboration. I mean, uh, Nani, as a, as a muralist, you're used to making things that are to be perceived from actually a fairly significant distance. Um, and at that scale, you know, augmented reality could make sense with, you know, a phone or something like that kind of, you know, um, but, uh, Leah, you're accustomed to making things that are tangible and up close and uh, in the wall like work that you've made, it's like, you're really up there. And in, in the picture you just showed, there's a person who's sort of like right up against the wall. And I'm curious, um, what sorts of, uh, thoughts you're having about whether the, the mural is something that people interact with or experience in this technologized way or in this expanded way uh, from far away or from up close or even both or where, where how you're bridging the, the kind of scales um, and especially Nani because this is could be very new for you if you're making have you made murals before that that people could appreciate or interact with or experience from way up close with like little details that they can kind of read yeah, um, I mean, the, the work that I showed, of of course, is, you know, a lot of them are from, they're pretty large scale, like, I think two of them that I showed you are, you know, they're both 20 feet high and over 100 feet long. Um, but yeah, walls come in all shape and sizes. And I think that the walls that we're currently looking at are ones that are on like the pedestrian level, you know, ones that would be on a sidewalk. And actually that is the, that is the size that actually, I think in a cityscape or in somewhere where there's a lot of pedestrian traffic, you know, those are, are pretty tangible size of walls. And the design process is different, you know, I mean, even in creating a mural, you know, you create for what you can see and what you can experience. Some walls are meant, um, larger ones, of course, you're gonna be larger with detail and content and the way that you design that. And with a smaller wall, you have a lot more, um, you know, you have a lot, uh, you're, you have a lot more intimate of an audience and the detail is a lot more intricate. Um, yeah, so you, I, I design for the space, for the space that's needed. Um, other questions sort of related to that. Um, what are some ways that, that you wish people could interact with a mural that you don't have technologies for yet? Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I, um, yeah, I mean, I think that there's so much with, um, for me, it's like really that tangibility, right? And I think that's, 2, 2D art is always just meant to be looked at, but what other ways can we in, internalize that? Maybe thinking about sound and sound capabilities. Um, you know, I, I think sometimes I'm interested in the way that like we bridge concepts and the way that concepts can come together to um, create different meanings. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but um, maybe the way that that sound or light isn't just used as like, you know, something that is kind of entertaining, but really something that adds to the content and adds to the facilitation of, of um, the question or, or the work itself. Um. There are, One, the, the, go ahead. sorry, Leah, then no, go ahead. Yeah, the, 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 the chat is hopping with great questions. Please go ahead. <laughs> oh, just a quick comment to that. I mean, I, and this, um, which is to push back on the premise of the question a little bit. I think uh, one of the things that I think is a, a wonderful and fruitful way of working and that I'm looking forward to Nani is that 
the existing te technology, we have a beautiful, rich palette and, and we've just never played with it in this context. And there's so much to do there with like the tech, with the materials that we have at hand. And I think the most interesting thing here is not some fancy new technology. It's actually in the integration and then in the conversation and in thinking about things like, um, you know, about, about kind of what we can actually build right now. And anyway, like to me, that's more interesting place to put attention, which not that the other thing isn't interesting, but that, yeah. But I think, yeah. Another uh, question, sorry. Way to put it. Thank you, Leah. <laughs> Another question from the chat, and this is really about the, the content in a way of, of such a mural. Uh, the person asks, um, given recent controversies around Confederate statues, um, how do you think that a technology-based mural could open up new opportunities for engaging public acceptance of or criticism around public arts symbolism? Like, are there ways uh, in which you, mm. you could, the technologies and the augmentation could open up, um, you know, more, greater access to the critical content? Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I absolutely do. I think one of, um, it's hard to, to base, um, I think, all public art into the realm of what the purpose of Confederate statues was, was for. Um, and I think that there is like this slippery slope that begins to talk about like um, public art is kind of, you know, it, it, a bit inoffensive or we should take it down or not take it down or what's really being said. And for me, that's the technology side and the art artist side is why the integration of community and community collaborators um, is so important is that whether we're using technology, whether we're using just paint, that we are facilitating this content in a conscientious way that is layered and that really begins from not trying to tell anybody a history or um, uphold, you know, somebody we think is important or should be upheld, um, but really that that content is coming from the community itself. Um, and that it's, it's made in that conscientious way um, of kind of being maybe a feedback loop of something. That's my intention with work, um, is that it's made to, to express a dialogue that is then giving out something and then receiving something, which in a weird way is kind of like a technological pun also. But, <laughs> but like, you know, that, that's the way that I think about the works that we're creating. So I absolutely think that public art in general, but also that the facilitation of these technological components can do that. And, and sorry. just a little yeah. comment also. Um, one, of the, one of the things that is interesting about this project that we're encountering already is not only the physical large scale, but the time scale um, as well is like over long periods of time. So working on a project that will, 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 will be installed over the course of many years, we're starting, for example, to do technical material tests just to see if our electronics can withstand like the outside environment over long periods of time, like over the course of many years. And and I mentioned that because I think one of the exciting and interesting technological possibilities here is to um, potentially to relate to time and change and ongoing interaction. And of course the mural itself like changes over time, the longer it is in a, a space and um, you know, it degrades, plants grow up, people get used to it, whatever, that, that the, the artwork in all sorts of ways is evolving, but the electronic element can have its own kind of evolving kind of history of interaction. And I think there's just a lot of richness there to explore in, in the time scale and, and how people relate to the mural over time um, that, 
that just to explore there that could relate to that to that question. Leah, one thing that that wasn't I don't think it was explicitly mentioned in your presentation together was was how did you to meet or how this how this arise? I, I realize you're both in New Mexico, but but how did this come together? Leah found me <laughs> in email. <laughs> I mean, this like general um, project is, I've had this like, since we kind of worked on the wallpaper project, I've been like, oh, I'd really love to try working on a mural project at some point. But like, I don't know, <laughs> I can't do that like by myself. Like I would need a great collaborator. And so um, so when I came to New Mexico, I, I like just asked people that I knew, like, do you know any muralist who might be interested in collaborating with me and who's you know, sensibilities, like we would have a good alignment there and rapport and stuff. And so that's, uh, I was, a friend of mine recommended Nani. And then I looked at her work and I was like, oh, it's so gorgeous. And so, yeah. And so I was really happy that she was interested too. So. I'm going to feel maybe, <laughs> I'm going to feel maybe two more questions and then we'll, then we'll wrap it up. Um, so uh, Nani, um, how do you manage all of the sort of hands involved in the work of making a mural. This, it's, it seems it's not just for a community, often it's by a community or a communities involved in making it happen. Something that's a hundred feet long, 20 feet high. It's not, you're not painting it all only by yourself, right? I mean, so tell us about- um, well, not Like the process. The process, but, and also how that process might be uh, wrinkled by, in an interesting way by the new collaboration as well. Um, well, so I, I do have a background in teaching and I think a lot of the mural process, um, like in these larger pieces that are a hundred feet long, I, I often have an assistant um, and they are already, you know, they're already painters. So there isn't too much, of course, there's always a teaching capacity in there. In the Washington mural in particular, I work on it to over two summers with students that were um, at the middle school themselves. So, you know, it was a group of 12 students. It was with Working Classroom, which is also a, the collaborator, collaborators that me and Leah will be working with. And in part of that was I taught a, a workshop to the students that I had and I taught them how I painted. I, I walked them through my process from start to finish. And, um, and they painted with me, you know, and then there were moments that of course me and my assistant, we would go through and kind of tie things together. But it's, that makes it interesting for me because in the finished product, you see it and it looks great. And there's, you know, it's a finished product but for me, I definitely see their hand in there. I see the student's hand. I see a 12 year old hand I see. And I think that makes it beautiful. I think that that's a different way of, of that mural looking of that painting looking that is something that I couldn't necessarily create. So um, I celebrate that. And I think that there is, there is a great deal of, um, of, teaching and literacy that kind of comes and kind of a uh, meshing of style and maybe that give and take a little bit in the process um, because you have to compensate and you can't, you know, always think everybody's going to do everything the way that you want it done. Um, as far as other community collaborations, it's every time I, I work on a mural and I think this is important to say because sometimes I think the idea of a community engaged mural means that everybody came and painted the mural and that's not necessarily true. I'm, I mostly paint the product. That's the, that's, that's the finish, but the community engagement part can take all different shapes and form that develop the content. And for me, the content of the work, the, the thing that makes the work stand is the content. And that's the part that takes the care um, and that's the part that I bring the community in. So sometimes that can be, you know, I've worked with um, traditional language keepers um, at, and I've worked with 
elders and I've worked with people who are in rehab facilities and people who are going through different stages of life and groups. And, you know, it's been sometimes it's all different forms of the way we develop this content or get to know each other um, and facilitate this almost every time it's different because every situation, every person is different. So it's sometimes we create other kinds of art together before we get to this process. So um, yeah, it, it, there isn't like kind of one thing to that, but yeah, I think that mostly it's a give and take process. And at the end of that, um, that's kind of how the collaborations come together. Thanks. And then Leah, the last question I have is, is for you. Um, we've known each other a long time. Uh, and, uh, I think it's really fair to say you're a, a pioneer in the field of, you know, hand and machine or, you know, high tech, low tech. Um, you've been at this a long time. Lily Pat Arduino was, I don't know, 15 years ago or something. Um, we've seen, you know, we've been through the, the maker movement, uh, and you know, you've, we've outlived make magazine and all that. Um, uh, and I guess this question is if, I mean, it's maybe not a state of the union, but more of a personal perspective on how um, your relationship to the sort of the landscape of hand and machine work has changed since you've been working in it. This is also maybe following on um, some of what Hannah Perner Wilson spoke about this morning in terms of her ambivalence in relationship to the e-textiles field as, you know, sort of post Google Jacquard and, 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 you know, post her, her, her textile shop, her tailor shop, like, like we've come a long distance uh, since you began the field. I'm sort of curious to know where you're at now with it and how you feel about it. Well, that's a big question. Um, I, um, I've, I overall, I would say I feel really happy and excited. I feel um, I I don't want to. When I started doing this kind of work um, again, like now that's been a, a long time ago. Like it felt like what I was doing was really weird, and there weren't very many people exploring things like this. Um, and now that's really not true. There's, I think, a vibrant, beautiful work happening at these intersections all over the place. And that is really incredibly just delightful. I, I don't know that I can take any credit for that per se. Like, I feel like there have been all sorts of things that have led to that outcome. I mean, a lot of like the coin of the word steam and work that has happened under that umbrella um, seeing some of the foundational work and, you know, I think despite some of my criticisms of make and stuff like the, you know, maker movement helped get a lot of stuff like out into the larger world outside of just like academic research labs. And, um, um, and, and that has been really exciting and, and interesting to, to watch happen. So I, I share, I think Hannah's, um, and I, I, Hannah is such a, a brilliant and an amazing artist and person and technologist and everything. I, I, um, I share some of her ambivalence about e-textiles in particular. Um, I, I feel essentially no ambivalence about this landscape um, of, of finding creative ways to work with technology and engage, um, you know, long standing, like making practices and a range of materials kind of um, in like our work with technology. And I think, I think there's tremendous, uh, there remain like incredible creative opportunities there for, you know, art and design, but also for just like technology development. Um, I think, a lot of the most exciting work in HCI and in design, frankly, is happening at these intersections, um, kind of blending what we know about, you know, making with all sorts of different materials and kind of blending that with new technologies. Um, so anyway, so I don't, I feel very, 
remain like super excited about and engaged with this larger field. I think, again, there are specific projects where if you stay in the domain too long, like I get restless, uh, e-textiles is one of them. I just assume like, I don't want to do that anymore, basically. But, um, I, but there are lots of beautiful, awesome things that I do want to do. So, um, so I think it's great. I mean, this conference is like one big chunk of evidence about how great it is, I think. So Thank I'm, so I'm delighted. I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you for sharing um, your energy and your work and your, um, just the, the, we're all, this is going to be very portentous and very exciting collaboration. It's, it's lovely to see it at this early stage where we're all going to follow along. I'm sure. It's, thank you so much for sharing your, your energy and work with us here. Um, during, you know, short days and dark times, it's really lovely to see, um, this kind of inspirational approach. So, uh, with that, I want to thank, um, Leah and, and Nani. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today here at Art and Code. We're going to pick it up. Um, in about 15 minutes at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time with Kelly Heaton. Uh, so I'll see you all soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.